Amber, why don't I start with you? Can you tell me about why you came to the gathering? Well, I've been living here in Nerebe since 2007. And just about six years ago, I was introduced to uh, helping a dog team here in town in Nakadui. And um, I've been a dog lover since I was a little girl. My mom can attest to that. I, I had a little husky in my little little jacket when I was five years old. And I, I, I was very thrilled to be part of a dog team. And every year I've grown, every year, uh, learning more and more about running a dog team on my own and just the basics of the care and uh, the relationship building, the bonding, and just getting to know just how we use all our resources around us as Inuit. And I'm here today because I do want to learn more. Um, I'm still young and I still, I'm still very keen to continue passing on uh, my experiences, my newfound skills to my own son and my, my friends and family. And I'm here so that I could gain more, to share more, to continue passing on our culture. Amber, I wonder if you can tell me a bit about the role of dog teams in Inuit culture. Uh, it's basically having the energy and the keenness and to and that, that passion to fulfill going out every day to see your dogs. Like Devin has how many dogs? 15? 15. 15 dogs. And I only run 10 here in town. And like there's the keenness to add more to your team and the energy and the amount of food. The, the maintenance and the dynamic of being able to have and show that passion every single day that you go and see your dogs. Like your energy is everything and Devin has a lot of energy to have 15 dogs and the love and like compassion that you show each and every single dog. Like you have a relationship with each and every one of them as being, it, it's about willing to have that and continue that bond every single day and just building that relationship every single day, maintaining it. And Devin has shown so much strength and like he's hunting with his dog team. He's, he's doing a lot of sport and like he's driven and it shows. And this is the first time I've met him. I, I'm inspired. And we don't do a lot of that around Nakadui too often. I wish we could, um, but building a relationship is the key to owning and running a dog team. And I hope Devin continues to inspire like myself and other youths in the future. Devin, can you tell me about some of the activities that Amber just mentioned? What do you do with your dog team on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis? Um, so I'm a full-time hunter um, and I use my dogs to go out hunting uh, from like polar bears to walrus, mainly seals. Uh, muskok and um, yeah I, I like during the spring and summer I was uh, living off hunting I was selling skins and uh, you know walrus tusks and then uh, this fall I got a job with QIA it's a pilot program so uh, we're the first ones to do it me and my buddy Owen Willie um, we're working for QIA we uh, we hunt with our dogs for the community so if we catch something we could keep it for our dogs or we could give it to people in town and then we get paid to do that so it's, like it's really awesome so i could just keep doing what i love to do that sounds really great it sounds like a good step towards revitalizing the use of dog teams in nunavut it sure is it makes it a whole lot easier because it's it's not free anymore to use dogs anymore you like for me i have to hunt for my dogs which takes a lot of costs off, but it also makes takes a lot of my time. And I also need like ammunition and food for myself. And uh, like sometimes I buy dog food, but most of it's uh, caught or, you know, like a boat during the summer, you need to buy gas and all that. Um, if you have a snowmobile, like you need to buy gas for the snowmobile to hunt for the dogs. So that's part of the reason that why we're here today too is so that we can actually share our, our our needs and like specific things that QIA could do for dog team owners in the Pistani region and like Devin like what QIA can do for him to continue doing what he loves owning a dog team maintaining his dogs feeding them and giving him the, the it's, it's basic needs and their important needs in the community and he is willing and fulfilling his desire to feed his community, feed his, his grandparents, and his family, and his friends. I mean, if, if he could do it, I'm sure he'd feed his whole community. Amber, what would you like to see for dog teams in Iqaluit to help revitalize them in that city? 
as a young adult uh, in Iqaluit with roughly 13 teams in town, um, the more I see involvement in our community, our dog team community in Iqaluit, um, I do see a lot more youth coming around as like, they have a desire to help and learn, understand the hard work that is put into dog team ownership. And something that I'd like to see is kind of more program and workshop uh, led by locals or elders or youth from other communities like Devon. I, I hope so I can bring Devon down to hang out with the kids here too. And I hope to see like more partnership within our communities. Um, so because like I said, like there's definitely a lot more to, to learn from other communities that could be useful here so that we can continue growing our dog team community and our youth can learn more. They, our youth here will gain more insight that I've learned here today too. And the main thing is that it's it's being open and willing to share our resources. Thank you so much for your time today. Koyanami, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Take care.